Here is the culprit count for this book. Mr. Green is nasty today, it seems. And here's the culprit count for all the books. Professor Plum is the only one who's still in single digits. Argofunk book review. Argofunk book review. Case 1. There's a plane crash. Everyone appears with a different item and a different explanation of what happened. White has the candlestick, Plum has the wrench, Scarlet has the revolver, Peacock has the knife, Green has the rope, and Mustard arrives last. Who has the lead pipe? Mustard! He's the only one whose item wasn't specified. Case 2, everyone is reading comic books when Miss Scarlet leaves to make a secret midnight phone call. She is sneaking valuable gems into the mansion. Everyone listens in on the phone call in this order. Green, White, Plum, Mustard, and Peacock. Two people try to take Miss Scarlet's gems. Who are they? It's green and white. They started listening first, so they heard the first part of the conversation where Scarlet talked about her hiding place. Case 3. Everyone smuggles weapons into the manor. Scarlet disguises the rope as a necklace. Mustard disguises the wrench as a monocle. White disguises the pipe as a vacuum part. Peacock disguises the candlestick as a feather. Green uses the gun as a pool cue, and Plum disguises the knife as a bow tie. Scarlet, Plum, or Peacock knocks someone on the head. Who did it? Peacock. It's not Scarlet because she had a rope and you can't knock someone unconscious with a rope. Same goes for Plum who had a knife. I disagree with this assessment. I think you can knock someone out with a knife. Just hit them with the butt of the knife. There's actually a second step to the puzzle. Instead of saying Scarlet, the author says a woman, you have to deduce which one based on the room she was in. Case 4. Green gets gold cufflinks and the lights go out, Body leaves with Peacock, Mustard is knocked unconscious, White is in the kitchen, and someone robs Green when he's with Scarlet. Who did it? Plum. He's the only one unaccounted for. Both this and the previous puzzle focus on what rooms people are in. I know that's how it works in the game, but pretty much every puzzle in these books ignores the rooms and focuses on the weapons, so I was thrown for a loop in solving those two. Case 5. Someone robs a silver safe. Peacock spies on the culprit, but Mustard spies on her, but a woman spies on him, but Green spies on her, but Scarlet spies on him. Who is the thief? Again, it's Plum, because he's the only one who's not accounted for. We can deduce that the woman spying on Mustard is white, since the other two women are already mentioned. Case 6. Everyone dresses up for Christmas, and they try to steal Mr. Body's valuable presents. That's going to put them on Santa's naughty list! Mustard loads a weapon, Scarlet takes a knife, Peacock has the wrench, Plum has the candlestick, White has an unspecified weapon, and the culprit has a rope. Who is the culprit? Green. He's the only character who wasn't mentioned by name. Mustard loaded a weapon, so he must have the gun. The wrench is the only weapon not mentioned, so White must have it. Case 7. A thief steals Miss Scarlet's necklace and tries to kill her with the rope. The thief buries the necklace with the lead pipe. The story jumps around a lot as various people see different parts of the robbery. White sees the attempted murder, Peacock sees the digging, Plum rescues Scarlet, and the final person sees the culprit escape. He wonders if it's body, plum, green, or white. Who is it? Mustard and green are the characters who are unaccounted for. The non-culprit wonders if green is guilty, so the non-culprit must be mustard, because if green was the culprit, he wouldn't be inside wondering if he's the culprit. The story successfully faked me out by mentioning five of the weapons. I wrote those down as clues, and it turns out they have nothing to do with the solution. Case 8. There is an escaped rhinoceros on a rampage. Mustard gives everyone a pistol. Only two pistols shoot perfectly. Scarlet gets the yellow gun, which shoots left. Peacock gets the green gun, which shoots right. Green gets the blue gun, which shoots perfectly. Plum gets the white gun, which shoots left. White gets a gun, which shoots perfectly. Mustard gets a gun. Green is shot by the purple gun, which doesn't shoot perfectly. Who did it? Mustard. The purple gun must be either his or White's, and it's not White's because hers shoots perfectly. Case 9. Mrs. Peacock teaches everyone some fighting moves. Green learns judo throw, karate chop, and pinch. White learns scream, duck, karate chop, and kung fu clobber. Scarlet learns pinch, karate chop, judo throw, and scream. Mustard learns kung fu clobber, judo throw, and how to call 911. Plum learns how to scream. 
Two people get into a fight. One uses judo throw and screaming. The other uses judo throw and karate chop. Who is it? It's Scarlet and Green. Case 10. Everyone gets an invitation for Mr. Body's funeral. They are happy to inherit his money, and they behave rudely. Mr. Body interrupts the funeral, and the culprit kills him in front of everyone. Who did it? You're supposed to reread the story carefully and notice Miss Scarlet's invitation was never mentioned. She never got one because she's the culprit. This is now the end of book culprit count. The end. Post book follow up. The artwork on the back cover changed for this book. I wonder why. I expected them to reuse the same artwork for the entire series. This book fits well with the rest of the series. I noticed a fair amount of puzzles where four to six things get mentioned, and you have to deduce the identity of the last two things, but that wasn't so bad that I thought the book was reusing puzzles. The puzzles continue to be decent, and the jokes continue to be funny. Unless something goes terribly wrong, like we saw in the previous book, the series could go on indefinitely. I give clue number five, Midnight Phone Calls, a thumbs up.